All right, so hi everyone. My name is Elizabeth Nelson and I'm a reference and instruction librarian at Penn State's Lehigh Valley campus. And I'm joined today by my colleagues, Christina and Brian, and I'll give them a moment to introduce themselves. Christina, do you wanna start? Sure, hi everyone. My name is Christina Raymond Murphy and I'm the Open and Affordable Educational Resources Librarian at Penn State. Okay. And Brian? Hi everybody, I'm Brian McGeary. I'm the Learning Design and Open Education Engagement Librarian at Penn State, and I'm located at the uh, Greater Allegheny campus just outside of Pittsburgh. All right, perfect. So today we're here to talk about how we created a multi-campus train the trainer model for librarians supporting OER adoption called OAER Leads. Uh, in today's session, we'll start out with a brief overview of OAER Leads as a train the trainer program. We'll touch on our program's goals, structure, and the impact we're seeing so far. We'll also share some obstacles and opportunities that have emerged, uh, as well as how we intend to assess our resulting adoptions. And we'll close our presentation today by sharing access to some of our materials for your adaptation and reuse. And now I'll hand it over to Christina to tell us a little bit more about the program. Thanks, Elizabeth. So we'll get started with some information about the OAER Leads Program. One quick note, OAER is an acronym used at Penn State to mean open and affordable educational resources. For us, it's an umbrella term that includes OER, of course, as well as affordable materials and library licensed materials. And at Penn State, affordable materials are defined as costing less than $50 for all the materials assigned per student. We're also privileged to have access to a large and broad collection of library ebooks and other licensed materials that instructors can assign as course materials at no additional cost to students. So those are included in this umbrella term as well. The OAER Leads program is funded from two sources, one internal and one external. We have internal funding via the Sally W. Callen Librarianship for Innovation, which I received, and which allows me to create and support projects like this one. We also have received external funding through um, a 2021 Penn State University Libraries Giving Tuesday campaign, which had, uh, of all the campaigns that happened at Penn State, one of the library ones was to support ongoing OER initiatives and to expand um, our adoption program. So the OER Leads program is structured as a train the trainer model. I created the program and Elizabeth and Brian joined me as co-facilitators, helping to pre prepare materials to support the librarians that are gonna join us in this. The librarians who became our first LEADS cohort learned about supporting OER and faculty adopting OER as a community of practice, sharing questions and ideas as they progressed through the training portion of the program. Then the LEADS were able to immediately put their skills to practice via local OER adoption programs at each of our eight participating Penn State campuses across the, 20, across the Commonwealth. These adoption programs were incentivized via funding from the OER, OAER Leads program as well. So they serve a double purpose. They help our leads get OER support started up immediately on their own campuses. And they also help us in continuing our goal of supporting faculty at all campuses to adopt OER and to learn more about open educational practices. To give you an idea of the timeline involved with this work, you can see here on the left that we started this program in spring of 2022. During that time, Elizabeth, Brian, and I created our training manual, which we'll be sharing a link in a few minutes to in the chat. During spring 22, we also selected and began onboarding our leads librarians. And the first piece of professional development included them taking the Creative Commons Certificate for Librarians. Then we collectively, in a community of practice, started working our way through the manual alongside a series of check-ins and discussion meetings we held to support the COP. Each of our leads librarians received a stipend to support their training, as well as their OER outreach and support work completed during the program. And at the end of the spring, we have the leads begin recruiting courses to participate in their campus adoption programs by you know, simply emailing out calls for particip participation to their campuses and by sharing the word on that in other ways that were appropriate to each of their contexts. So you can see it was a pretty quick turnaround from creating our training materials to our leads completing the training to them actually starting the work of meeting with faculty who are gonna adopt OER. During the summer of 2022, the librarians started to work with these faculty, set up meetings with them to discuss their courses and started exploring their options for adopting OER, affordable materials and or library licensed materials. 
The adopting faculty also each receive stipends for each course they have accepted to the program. About half of our courses are using their adoptions right now this fall, with the remaining in the spring. So some of our librarians are still in the standing planning stages with these later courses. And as the courses progress, the librarians will be visiting each one to share two surveys, one for faculty and one for students. We'll mainly be assessing faculty and student perceptions and experiences with OER, but we're still in the process of creating those surveys, so that focus may narrow as we work through it. And finally, next summer in 2023, we'll be collating all that data back from the surveys that we get and starting to assess it, along with additional data we're collecting on cost savings and other impact measurements for each course. We're preparing to share our findings more widely at that point as well, likely via a publication. And here you can see, just uh, to give an idea of the scope of this, there are here are the eight participating campuses circled in white. Penn State has quite a few campuses. Um, but because we have, we're able to bring in eight new librarians, we have the leads working with populations across a really good portion of the state. And you know, Penn, Pennsylvania is a large state, so you can kind of see that each campus is working with a little bit of a different population and in a different context than the others. Some of our campuses are quite small and some are massive. Uh, that's one reason why a big focus of this train the trainer program is making sure that each librarian can come to the program from their own context, bring their own concerns and areas of focus, and leave the program with information, resources, and strategies that will work well for their own campus. It isn't meant to be a trickle-down approach from one location. Instead, each of our librarians is bringing their own perspective to the table and ultimately improving OER leads as a result. And now I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to talk about why we took this approach. Perfect, thanks, Christina. Uh, so I'll briefly share some of the goals we had for how the OER Leads program might impact our libraries and our campuses. Uh, one of the primary reasons that we involved so many campuses across the Commonwealth in this project was that we specifically wanted to grow the existing network of OER expertise at Penn State by adding more OER experts at more campus locations throughout the university. Similarly, we hoped that our new OER leads librarians would join in as point people for requests for OER support at their own campuses, as well as new collaborators in OER advocacy and support projects happening across Penn State. As mentioned earlier, we also hoped that by starting up these new incentivized adoption programs at various Penn State campuses, we'd help to raise awareness of and experiences with the benefits of OER among our faculty. We're happy to say that these adoption programs are already directly impacting 34 courses across our eight participating campuses. And we're also hoping that as our faculty take part in this program, we'll see a ripple effect of them sharing their experiences, the benefits they learned, and, and the lessons they learned with their peers. And that as a result, we'll start seeing more spontaneous requests for help finding OER from those peers as well. And finally, it's our intention to share this adaptable train the trainer model and materials more widely so that librarians, instructors, or instructional designers can adapt these materials for use at their own institutions as well. And at the end of today's presentation, we're going to start fulfilling that goal by sharing with you some of our materials under open licenses for your own reuse and adaptation. As part of making this model adaptable for anyone, we also want to share some of the challenges and opportunities that we've discovered along the way for you to consider and plan for as well. Our first challenges were around recruiting, uh, getting enough librarians who had the capacity for the additional workload of participating in this program was difficult, but we had an even harder time getting faculty to sign on. Um, and interestingly, it doesn't appear that that was related directly to campus size. Both our smallest participating campuses and our largest campus, University Park, had difficulty recruiting more than one or two faculty members. However, other campuses in the program recruited between five and nine faculty members. So it seems like this may have been more of a situational challenge than an issue with the overall program. We also had some challenges with faculty who signed on to the program, but really wanted to do more of an authorship project than an adoption project which was unfortunately outside of our ability to support within this program. Uh, some bigger picture challenges right now include the future and long-term sustainability of the program within the OER environment at Penn State, as well as one of our larger goals of using this program as a stepping stone toward making connections around OER between faculty and departments at different campuses. Uh, exactly how we're gonna be tackling that, we're still determining. However, one of the opportunities that OER Leads brought us was the beginning of making those connections as we were able to share what's happening within this program at each participating campus, 
And we're also beginning to connect some faculty within the program with shared or related courses. Uh, we were also able to share with our faculty and our campuses just a general greater awareness of both library resources available to them and the benefits of OER as course materials. Uh, OER Leads has also provided us with a proof of concept model for uh, how we can distribute the workload of OER support around Penn State while still sharing centralized funding and, and uh, organization. Our Leads librarians have repeatedly told us that the community of practice we created together has been a significant help to them and one that we all hope to continue to use and grow. And finally, this model of support and our new COP are both steps toward an ultimate goal of building Penn State's capacity to support OER at a scale to match the size and breadth of our institution. And now I'll hand it over to Brian to talk more about the impact of the program so far. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so we're doing a number of things in terms of uh, evaluating the impact of this program and sharing about that. Um, First of all, we're developing surveys that will be distributed to uh, faculty who are participating in the program, as well as to the students in the courses where they're actually deploying their, their newly adopted open and affordable course materials. And uh, these surveys will help us to, to learn more about the uh, qualitative impact of the new materials on student learning and on the, the teaching process for, for the faculty but also uh, to learn more about uh, the success of uh, the program in supporting the faculty to actually do this work of transforming their, their courses. Um, additionally, we'll be calculating cost savings that have been realized by shifting to these new course materials. And uh, in the leads manual, we have a detailed explanation of how we'll arrive at those calculations. In terms of assessing the effectiveness of the program from the librarian's perspectives, uh, we're going to collectively determine our assessment strategy within our community of practice that we have of, of all the uh, librarians who are participating in the LEADS program. And uh, because this program was funded through a combination of endowment funds and fundraising dollars, We'll also be sharing this information back with our relevant internal stakeholders at Penn State to show what we've achieved with that funding and to try to make a case to hopefully get, you know, continued funding for this effort. Um, and we'll also work with our public relations and marketing office to share more about the impact of this program more widely. So we've uh, created a folder to share openly licensed versions of our program materials, and the folder contains a copy of the LEADS manual itself, as well as an example letter that librarians can provide to, to the faculty uh, for their dossiers, and um, also a copy of the worksheet that librarians can use in their consultations with, with faculty. Um, and so there's a shortened link and a QR code to access that uh, folder on the slide, and we'll also share that link in the chat as well. And so thank you all for attending our presentation today. And if you have any questions or ideas to share, either for us or for our LEADS librarians, or if you have any thoughts or requests about the materials we're sharing, please feel free to contact us at the uh, email addresses on the screen. And again, thank you all for attending.